What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Nookbox K8 Plus from GMK Tech. What we've got here is a pretty quick mini PC powered by the Ryzen 7 8845HS. And when it comes to GMK Tech, they've really been redesigning their mini PCs. I do like what they're doing here. This does have that see-through top and they are offering a couple different variants over on their website, including a bare bones model for $389. So if you've already got RAM and storage, you can definitely save some money there. And this is a pretty powerful little system. Along with the mini PC itself, inside of the box, we get a mounting bracket, six foot HDMI cable, and our 120 watt power supply. With that mounting bracket, you can put this on the back of your monitor, under a desk, on a wall. You can mount this thing basically anywhere. In this video, we've got a lot to go over, but before we get into it, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $20.40 for a full Windows 11 Pro key. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA. You can get 30% off. As for I.O. on the new K8 Plus, up front here, we do have Oculink. So we can actually get some really fast eGPUs connected here. It's PCIe 4.0 X4, so it is much faster than USB 4. But we've also got a USB 4 port up front also. Two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and of course, we've got our power button here. On each side, not a lot going on, just a bunch of ventilation for the new built-in cooling system they have here, which, just want to mention, does work out really well, even up to 70 watts in this unit. And around back, we've got two full-size USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, another USB 4 port, and our power input. In total, without an eGPU connected, this can do up to four displays out, utilizing HDMI, display port, and both of those USB 4 ports. GMK Tech has released a few mini PCs recently with the same kind of case system we've got here, but it's super easy to get into the internals. On the top of the unit, we've got this see-through cover. You're just gonna twist it, you can lift it off. Underneath there, four screws, and now we can remove the fan, which is meant to cool the RAM and the M.2 SSD, or in this case, the dual M.2 SSDs, because it will support two PCIe 4.0 drives. We've also got dual channel SODIMM RAM running up to 5600 megahertz. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. And with this, we do get several different power modes. Top of the line is going to be a 70 watt TDP, giving us those really high clocks. But with this chip, we get eight cores, 16 threads, base clock 3.8, boost up to 5.1, that built in Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3, 12 compute units up to 2700 megahertz. This will support up to 96 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 at 5600, two M.2 NVMe slots, and each of these will do four terabyte. So in total, with internal storage, we can do up to eight terabytes with this unit. And out of the box, this is running Windows 11 Pro. First thing I wanted to check out here was the BIOS because we do have a few settings here that could be very important to some people. From the main section, power mode select. Quiet mode is going to be around 35 watts. Balance mode is going to be around 54. And with performance, we do have a boost up to 70 watts. For this video, I'm going to performance mode. The cooling system they have here with the 8845HS definitely seems sufficient enough to go up to that wattage. And over on their website, they state that, yeah, this is exactly what it's meant for. From advanced, if we take a look down the list, we've got everything unlocked that we really need here. With that performance mode set, there's really not much more that we need to do in terms of tweaking the CPU TDP, but from the graphics configuration, right here, we can go up to 16, and with this unit, I'm going to be going to 8 gigs. We're going to allocate 8 gigs of VRAM over there. That's about it, but you know, under AMD CBS, we do have the CPU common options, 
SMU options, system configuration up to 54 watts, but since we're using the performance mode up front in the main section, we don't even need to touch that. Once you've got all those set, we can save and exit. Now that we're back in Windows, give you a look at a few things. We've got that 8845 HS, 32 gigs of RAM, and of course the 780M iGPU. From the BIOS, we did take it up to 8 gigs. Stock is set to 3, and it will allocate more, but personally I just like setting it up to 8, especially since we've got 32 gigs, we've got more than enough to do so. Checking out that TDP, since we're in performance mode, I've got CPU-Z right here. We'll stress this out. It'll come on up, and we should be steady at 70 watts. Yeah, there we go. 70 watts. Little fan does kick up just a bit, but it's actually a pretty quiet little system here. We're getting some really good clocks on the CPU. 4.5, 4.6 on all eight cores. But when it comes to everyday normal use case scenarios, like web browsing, email checking, video playback, this thing is going to work out for 99% of people out there. Even photo editing and video editing would work out well on this 8845HS. Checking out some web browsing here. We'll just head over to GMK Tech's website. AMD Mini PC up at the top here. We've got the K8 Plus, bare bones 389. So if you've got RAM and storage already, this is actually a pretty decent deal, but it can go up from there. You're going to get 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD and Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. Moving down here, like I showed you, up to 70 watts, 35, 54, 65, and 70 watts. We'll go ahead and check out some 4K video playback. Full screen. Stats for nerds. And we definitely want to go up to 4K. Give it just a second. And if you take a look up in the top left hand corner, we've got our drop frames right here. Zero. And it's going to run throughout without dropping any frames. And even at 35 watts down to that lowest silent profile, you're still going to get great 4K video playback out of this machine. If you want to stream 4K from your favorite websites like YouTube, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, it's not going to be an issue for this system. And of course, if you wanted to do some native playback from an internal drive or an external drive, this machine will handle it. Now, I want to take a look at some benchmarks and then we're going to move into some PC gaming because I do think that with this 780M up to 70 watts here on the TDP, we're going to see some really great performance out of this machine. First up, Geekbench 6 coming in with some pretty impressive scores. Single, 2,559. Multi, little over 13,000. Not bad for that 8845HS. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid. Over 30,000 here, which is looking great. We've got that 780M with SODIM DDR5 RAM only up to 5,600. A lot of the times when we see these 780M IGPUs, they're in handhelds with either 64 or 7,500 megahertz RAM. But given that we can take that TDP up, get those higher clocks, it can kind of even out there a little bit. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy coming in with a 3,348. So for these synthetics, falling right in line with most of the other mini PCs using a very similar chip. But now it's time to get into some real world gaming. The first one we have here is Overwatch 2. 1080p medium settings, and with a chip like this, at this kind of wattage, I've always had really good luck with esports games. Dota, Fortnite, Overwatch 2. We're right there, getting an average of around 93 FPS, 100% resolution scale, and if you wanted to go on up, remember with this game, you can enable FSR 2.2. I also wanted to throw in at least one fighting game. So here's Street Fighter 6 1080 Medium. And originally I wanted to run this at high settings, but it does dip down every once in a while. With these fighting games, I definitely wanted that steady 60. So Medium is where it's at. As we know, Doom Eternal is a very well optimized game. It does work well on these iGPUs. And right now we're at 1080 Medium with no dynamic resolution scale. Usually I do turn it on, setting it to around 90 FPS there, but without it all together, we're seeing an average of 72 FPS.
Cyberpunk 2077. Low with AMD frame gen on. So we are using the newly included FSR 3 frame gen here. And you could take this up to medium settings, lock it down right there at around 68 FPS on average. But at low, we're seeing an average of 87. Not too bad. And personally, I know what I'm working with here with these iGPUs. I know some people just don't like frame gen, but it does work great on these higher wattage units. And finally, Horizon Forbidden West Remastered. I did have to take this down to 900p, even at low with FSR set to performance and frame gen on, under that 60 mark, but at 900p, we're a little over it. Saw an average of 61. Really waiting on some more optimizations for the newly remastered version because I've not had great luck on iGPUs just yet. Overall, not a bad little system, really impressed by the performance this thing's putting out. And remember, in this video, we only took a look at iGPU performance. If you're interested in seeing this thing connected to an Oculink eGPU, we could go with something like a 7600 MXT or even a 7800M. Just let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I mean, I do like the design, love what they've been doing with their new cooling systems. Up to 70 watts here without thermal throttling is pretty awesome. And the fact that they sell a bare bones model for people who already have that RAM in storage is definitely a plus. You can save some money right off the top there. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave links to GMK Tech's official website in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.